Okay, YouTube, uh, I've seen a few videos on this uh, virtual on-screen keyboard. It's an inherent part of the uh, Mac OS. Uh, it's uh, got various uses. Uh, my personal use is I uh, access my computer remotely uh, and often not from another Mac, from uh, a Windows or a Linux or even my uh, Android phone. I'm sure you could access your Mac from a, a iPad as well, but uh, one of the no, you know what? First, let me tell you why you might need it. The other computers don't have these fancy buttons that help you do fancy things on, uh, you know, like switching your screen. There's YouTube switching back, and so the use of those buttons is is really what I liked because uh, when I'm remote viewing my computer I like things to be in full screen um, you know I'm, I'm gonna go to, to look at my pictures that are not on my phone let's say they're all on my home computer uh, I don't need to transfer them to my phone if I can look at them uh, on the home computer basically you might want to know how to get this uh, uh, function that's that's uh, free. It's already on your operating system, and the first thing you're going to need to do is go to System Preferences. I'll uh, oh, let me move my keyboard. Oh, you're gonna, you know, like many other things, make them big or small. I like it generally small. Put it over here on the side. Get it out of the way. As you can see, when I switch around, it always floats on top. That's pretty handy. Go to keyboard. Pretty obvious. Show keyboard options and character viewer in menu. You want to make sure that that's clicked. Look right up here where my mouse cursor is. That is what you're seeing. That flag, that's another, that's the input sources. That just indicates I've clicked this. You don't necessarily have to click that. I'll go ahead and unclick that. Um, but if you wanted other kinds of keyboards, you can add them here. You know, uh, let's say you. Uh, no multiple languages, you need to type in a different language, you just don't like the layout, maybe you're British, uh, you know, maybe you like the Dvorak uh, method of typing, and uh, maybe you like to switch back and forth. You can add all these uh, and then show them, but uh, I don't, I just have the US keyboard. I don't need to show it, uh, so for right now I won't. Oops, I clicked out of that, let me go back. Go to keyboard, show the keyboard characters, uh, and this is where you can hide it, and it didn't hide. Show keyboard viewer. Why it is... Oh my goodness, there. I've closed it. Show it. Okay. <laughs> I don't know why it glitched. It has never glitched before. Hide it. You know, to use this, it requires the use of, of a pointer device, so the mouse. So, so when you get home, you know, you can close it, or if it's in your way, you can close it. You can also minimize it. It goes down to the dock. You can bring it back. And uh, I think I showed you make it bigger or smaller. But by default, you can't use the uh, shift buttons. You need to turn on sticky buttons. And with that... Oh my goodness, I'm stuck on making it some... There we go, let me go back to this. Um, you need to go to Accessibilities. Keyboard's in the way again. Accessibilities. And you need to enable sticky keys. Okay, without the sticky keys enabled, if I push the shift, it disappears. If I push the uh, command button, it disappears. If I push caps lock, that's cool. That helps me do capital letters, but it doesn't help me do all the fancy functions stuff that that we love about our Macs. Uh, so you need to enable the sticky keys, and there's some options on how and why and whatever. And I've clicked the display the sticky key f or uh, accessibilities, and it shows you sticky keys on. Okay, done, done. So with sticky keys on, I push it once. And if I push a, a uh, push any other button once, it goes away. And I've just tabbed between QuickTime and, and uh, LibreOffice there. If 
I push it twice, I've locked it in. So I can do these functions. I can uh, quick switch between uh, various uh, uh, programs, you know, push it again to turn it off. So let's say I want to, you know, go to Chrome. Oh, I'm already there. I could go to back to here. I could go to uh, back to LibreOffice, uh, Apple Store. No, that's what I really love, especially when remotely viewing. If uh, you put your, uh, com if you use your television as a monitor and you're too lazy to get up and get the keyboard, this is another nice uh, uh, feature you can turn on. To, so that you could just use your uh, mouse as a remote control, or or maybe you're using Magic Mouse or or uh, uh, on your on your iPad, one of those simple low load apps that that uh, uh, allows you to to control your computer while you're not sitting in front of it. And if you're not sitting in front of it, odds are you don't have the keyboard. Well, here's the whole keyboard, so you can type in your Netflix queue like, or whatever. Uh, so uh, let me go back to LibreOffice uh, uh, and just typing. It, oops, I left that on. Typing uh, is just pushing the buttons like you would. If you know, if I had a touch screen, I could touch the the keyboard. And of course, hitting the shift makes it nice, and it goes back to lowercase. You know that way. If I wanted caps lock, oh wow, because I had the shift on. What's going on there? Caps lock is not caps locked. Caps lock. I'm confused about caps lock now. Okay, there are bugs in the system, but you can double press the shift key. And now you have caps lock. See, uh, when you turn on that accessibility, you can uh, request to have the uh, button up there show. Also, there's a little audio sound. I don't know if you can hear it. Uh, that's all part of the accessibility features. Anyway, I hope that helps. Uh, really helped me. Um, uh, you know, use make this useful. If anybody knows how to get this virtual keyboard to show on the log screen, that would be cool. Uh, I'd like to hear about that.